Good day, subscribers. Thank you. Oh, shit. Have you ever wondered what Warren Buffett does to make his many billions of dollars, how he became the richest man in the world? Well, today I'm going to show you guys the type of strategy he uses, the way he thinks, and the ratios he looks at for making successful investments. I cannot wait to share this with you guys today. do probably the favorite video I've ever done because it is talking about one of my business idols in Warren Buffett and the way he thinks about investments, the type of things he decides upon to make an investment. And I studied him from the get-go when I was looking into getting into, into investing and his fundamentals, his core structure is still what I make my investments on today. Now him and I might disagree on some things, the way he you know, he thinks about companies may not be the exact way I think about them. And we might differ on what type of companies we may invest in, those kinds of things. But ultimately, the core foundation, I still use it to this day, six or seven years later, however long it's been. And I probably will use that same strategy forever. So let's go ahead and get into this and let's talk about the five main things he looks for in an investment. Now, the first two points are really about mindset more than looking at ratios and those kinds of things. It's really about your mindset for these first two set steps. Circle of competence being number one. Number two, thinking about the business and not a stock. So first, number one, circle of confidence. I talked about this a little bit in my video I did called Key to Investing. And what that means, staying in your circle of competence, it means investing in a business that you fully understand. You can get a grip around, and it's not an industry that you are just baffled by and you don't really know and you're just kind of gambling on it, just thinking, oh, that man, maybe that will be the next big thing or whatnot. You're just kind of gambling on it. You want to stay in your circle of competence, be with industries that you know really well. So maybe you know a lot about tech, uh, technology. You know, you, you can kind of see what the next company is going to be that's going to make innovative products and make a lot of money off those products and those kinds of things. So invest in the tech sector. And maybe you don't understand retail that, that well because you never worked retail. You don't really know much about retail. You don't know if Walmart's going to be, you know, a great company in the future. You don't know if Amazon's going to take all the market share away from the retailers. You don't have a strong opinion on that. So stay away from the retailers and vice versa. Um, so stay in industries that you have a good, comfortable feeling on and you can really see around the corner and know if an investment's going to be successful in the future. Point number two, think about the business and not stock price. And what he kind of means by that is if you buy a stock, you can look at that stock price every minute, every second, every day, and you can think about, okay, my business is worth this much or this much. If you buy a farm or you buy a McDonald's franchise or something like that, you cannot look at how much that's worth every day. You don't know if you went and sold that to somebody else and you don't think about it in those terms. You think about the business and how it's going and how the employees are doing and what's the profit coming in each month and each year and those kinds of things. So think about when you go into an investment, if you're looking, say you want to invest in Apple, think about Apple as a business, not a stock price. So don't worry about what happens day to day in the stock price and whatnot. Just focus on the business, focus on the fundamentals, focus on the products the company makes, those kinds of things. And that goes for all companies. And don't get influenced by what the stock price does day to day, whether it goes up 5% or down 5%. Don't be influenced by that. The only thing you want to be influenced on as far as the stock price is if it drops considerably after you make an investment, then you want to go ahead and buy some more shares and buy some more shares as long as the fundamentals of the company are strong and you believe in them in the future. And then if the stock goes up massively in a short period of time and it's no longer undervalued in your opinion, then you may want to sell some of those shares, if not all of those shares. So that's the only thing you want to pay attention to when it comes to stock price. In the short term. Number three, now we're kind of getting into more like ratios and those kinds of things. Low PE ratio. For those of you who are kind of beginners looking at investments and whatnot, a PE ratio means the price versus um, price to earnings. Excuse me, I almost forgot what a PE ratio is. Price to earnings. 
So that means the stock price versus the earnings. So let's say the stock price is $100 a share and the earnings they have are $10 per year. So $10, and not $10 total, but $10 per share. So you divide the $100 stock price by $10 per share in earnings and you get a PE ratio of 10. Warren Buffett likes to really invest in companies that have PE ratios under what the market's trading at. So under what the S&P 500 is trading at. So if the S&P 500 is trading at a PE ratio on average of around 17, he might like to invest in a company that's trading at a 15, a 13, a 12, something like that, because generally that's gonna mean the company is undervalued versus the rest of the market. So that's what he looks at when it comes to a PE ratio. Number four, I hope you guys can see this way down here. Number four, strong balance sheet. Strong balance sheet, very important. And what he's looking at is basically the short-term assets, the short-term liabilities, and the long-term assets, and the long-term liabilities. And he's really looking for like at least a two-to-one ratio in most of the investments he makes. So meaning if the company has $80 billion in assets, he wants the company to have $40 billion in liabilities or less. So at least $2 in every asset per $1 in liabilities. So keep that in mind. And that's something that really predicts a strong balance sheet. Also looking at the cash and cash available on hand versus the long-term debt of the company, that's very important. You don't want a company, and he generally doesn't want a company that has a ton of debt on the balance sheet and has very little cash. Because when that company, if that company has trouble on the earnings part, then they don't have a lot of cash on hand and they have a lot of debt to pay, you really run into some scenarios there. You can run into the company stock price getting extremely hammered because a lot of people will start questioning bankruptcy and those kinds of things. So that's why you always want to have a strong balance sheet, and he always looks for a strong balance sheet, generally in most companies. Number five, last point, trustworthy management. So he wants a management team that he can trust, that he feels just as a human instinct that he can decide upon by listening to them talk and those kinds of things, and he trusts them that they will make the right decisions for the company. Now, one last point I'll point out with it comes to the management, he also believes in the philosophy of investing in a company that any idiot can run because someday an idiot will run it. So he wants a trustworthy management, but at the same time, he wants to have a strong enough business that if a bad CEO runs a company someday, the company will still be strong. It's kind of like the United States of America. You know, sometimes we have idiots running the country, but somehow we still stay on top. It's amazing. So... That is investing like Buffett. Those are the main five points. And there are other things we could go into and we could talk for days about different philosophies and whatnot. And over time, something to understand about Warren Buffett, over time, he's kind of changed his investment approach a little bit because he his fund is so much money now. He's got so much money under management. He has so many billions coming through the door that he can really only focus on the biggest companies in the world. So sometimes people wonder, man, Warren Buffett, he doesn't get the percentages he used to. He used to get 20% a year for decades. And now he only gets, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, because he's only being able to pick from a few of the biggest companies in the world. And he has to pick which one might be the best out of those guys. And the reason being, he's got so much money. If he invests in a company that's got a billion dollar market cap, or say even a $10 billion market cap, it doesn't make a difference for him because it's such a small amount, it's not even going to get noticed. So he has to pick these huge companies to invest in because they have so much free cash flow every single month. So I hope this explained the simplest process of how Warren Buffett makes his investments. And maybe you guys should study it. Also study other people. Study um, you know short sellers and some of the famous guys like that. Um, you shouldn't just listen to what Buffett has, although, you know, he's my go-to guy. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Subscribers, thank you as always. If you haven't subscribed, you may want to talk a ton about personal finance, a lot about investing, those kinds of fun things, and have a great day. Good day, subscribers. Thank you. Oh, shit.